Hello everybody, today I am starting module 1 and this is the first lecture of the module 1. So, in this lecture I will give a general introduction to the vibration problems with special emphasis in continuous modeling and then I will tell about the modeling of dynamic systems. Let us see what will be the outline of the lecture. The outline of the lecture is first I will give a general introduction to vibration, then I will tell you some common terms what are the meanings of their terms and then I will distinguish between discrete and continuous system and what is the special features in continuous system that I will discuss. After that I will tell you the characteristics of dynamic system, what are the elements by which we can model a dynamic system. Then lastly the modeling of undamped and damped system will be discussed with mathematical expressions. So, let us see what does the term vibration mean. The vibration is understood as an oscillatory motion of the bodies. All bodies having mass and elasticity are capable of vibration and we experience such vibration in our day to day life uh, while moving in a car in a rough road or even in a flight in a airplane we experience the vibration due to turbulence. Then uh, the disastrous effect of vibration are experienced by everybody or uh, we have noticed it uh, that is uh, the earthquake and uh, cyclone. Uh, everybody have uh, uh, known this, uh, this harmful effect of such kind of this dynamic load that is imposed by uh, the ground motion during earthquake and wind high wind velocity and uh, there are some examples motion of guitar spring uh, that is also a uh, vibration causing a vibration pendulum is a common example of vibration motion fell by passenger in car train then swaying of tall buildings due to earthquake and wind etcetera. Uh, basic response to vibratory body is measured in terms of displacement, velocity and acceleration. So, when the body is in motion, we get the displacement, velocity and acceleration and the second and third parameters that is velocity and acceleration are nothing but the first derivative and second derivative of the displacement. The vibration is a time dependent phenomenon and in many cases vibration ceases due to very important property of the structural materials that is known as damping and uh, when the, the force exciting force is withdrawn then vibration ceases. So, that is due to inherent properties of the system. Now, if I see the difference between the vibratory load that is the dynamic load and the other load that is acting statically that is as a fixed position not varying with time that uh, static load is not varying in uh, time, but variable in space that means it may be uh, distributed in the space in the uniform manner or non uniform manner. For example, the self weight of a structure which is having uniform material properties and cross sectional area then we get that self weight is uniformly distributed over the domain of the structure. So, the static load in fact is a function of space variable. In general in three dimensional cases we can take that static load is a function of x y z if x y z are Cartesian coordinates. In contrast if I see the dynamic load then we find their variation both in space and time. So, it should be a function of x y z and another parameter is added that is the t which is the time 
examples of dynamic load are earthquake load that we already know and especially for uh, structures which are constructed in seismic prone area have experienced several uh, earthquakes and uh, withstand also such earthquake because of their good design and sometimes collapsed also because of faulty design. Then we have uh, seen that wind load how it causes the uh, structure to vibrate and its harmful effect. Blast loading is a causing vibration, but it is transient in nature and uh, the powerful effect of blast also causes several casualties and this damage of the buildings. Machine vibration we all uh, experience very frequently and uh, it is found in um, this in turbine uh, operation and any other uh, machine that is uh, operating in the industry or in our day to day life also even in washing machine also we experience vibration. Then vehicle induced vibration in bridge, bridge is a uh, structure in uh, transportation network and very important structure in respect of uh, social and economic development of any region and we see that that bridge vibrates due to uh, uh, moving vehicles and this vibration is more if the pavement of the bridge is not even. Then foot bridge vibration is also experienced in many cases and there are various uh, case studies also when the foot bridge is crowded especially during the opening time then uh, this vibration caused due to pedestrian movement. Effect of dynamic load on structures and machines are mainly the resonance, fatigue and uh, others in this category I have given you these three uh, uh, these parameters that is right comfort, controllability and serviceability. Resonance is a very important parameter. Every element or structures or components due to their mass and elastic properties that is the stiffness, there is some uh, frequency that is known as natural frequency of the system and the exciting force has also certain frequency. So, if these two frequency matches then uh, this uh, the effect of the dynamic load is uh, amplified to a great extent and in that case the failure may take place. So, the resonance have to be avoided uh, in structures and machines and therefore, design has to consider the dynamic analysis. Then another is fatigue that is uh, due to uh, continuous action of uh, this alternating stress on the structure just like your bridge that is subjected to vehicle motion or any other load say uh, any other structure say for example, a lamp post uh, tall lamp post which is continuously subjected to wind action has shown some uh, fatigue damage and bridge there are uh, several examples of fatigue damage especially at the joints and therefore, this fatigue is also caused by the dynamic load on the structures. Other effects of dynamic load is right comfort already I have told you that uh, during motion of a car the passenger experiences the jerking especially if the road is uneven. So, that is uh, uh, caused by vibration of the vehicle and we experience this kind of vibration in uh, car and train also. Then controllability of the equipment or any gadgets that are installed in the building or in the car that is very much affected by the vibration. So, in that case the machine may not uh, or equipment may not work properly. Serviceability, excessive vibration may causes the st uh, structure to deflect uh, beyond uh, its perm permissible limit. Because of this, the serviceability although this um, 
structure is not collapsed because the permissibility uh, permissible limit is set considering the the span depth etcetera and it is much above the safety limit. So, therefore, the serviceability of this uh, structure is affected because of excessive sagging and vibration that is caused due to uh, action of dynamic load. So, these are the main harmful effects of vibration and in sometimes we have seen there are uh, other uh, work where the vibratory load has some beneficial uh, role. For example, the compaction of concrete when you pour the concrete in a structure, then we insert the vibratory needle due to vibration the concrete is compacted which eliminates the manual compaction by the tamping rod. So, these are the examples of uh, the effect of dynamic load which causes the vibration in the structure. One of such uh, example you can see the damage of the building during earthquake and uh, this is the picture which is taken from the damages that occurred in the Bhuj earthquake in 2001. Then you can see the wind induced uh, vibration of structures of the left hand uh, side picture is for a office building. Uh, which is uh, damaged by storm and the failure of a steel towers that are seen in some airport located in Philippines. Then you can see that is a collapse of a suspension bridge which occurred in 1940 uh, in Washington DC. So, this bridge is uh, known as Tacoma narrow bridge and uh, it actually starts vibrating due to wind action and uh, the torsional mode was excited due to this uh, wind speed and uh, it feeds the energy to the system and therefore, the amplitude goes on increasing ultimately leading to the collapse. Such type of uh, phenomenon is uh, due to aerodynamic effect and it is known as flutter and due to flutter this bridge collapsed because it was so slender and the designer could understand that uh, the, the slenderness of the bridge causes the failure due to flutter and ultimately the bridge was reconstructed with stiffening. Then you can see the crack that is developed in a plate gutter bridge this is the picture of a plate gutter. You can see here uh, this the crack that is developed is due to the continuous action of the dynamic load and it is a long term effect. Fatigue crack does not develop immediately just like the collapse of an earthquake which has immense um, energy to vibrate the building or the large structure. But fatigue uh, takes long time to show its effect in terms of uh, development of crack and its propagation. So, this is one example of a plate gutter bridge where you can see this is the longitudinal stiffener and this is the wave of the plate gutter and the crack is developed and it is propagated. Ultimately, this type of thing causes failure if the proper retrofitting and restoration work is not carried out. Next you can see the, uh, the failure of a steel bridge due to uh, fatigue. So, that is one example of the uh, this dynamic effect. This is very interesting uh, example uh, a bridge is located in London over the river Thames. So, this is known as Millennium Bridge. This bridge was constructed in 2000 and it was open for traffic. Uh, immediately after opening to traffic, there are a lot of crowds in the bridge and the movement of the crowd 
actually causes the lateral vibration of the bridge deck. Ultimately, the bridge vibrates so much that pedestrian has to stop the work and the authority has stopped the bridge for certain days and carried out this stagnating work. Now, let us see some definition of the terms. In vibration problem, we encounter a common term that is known as degree of freedom. So, what does the degree of freedom mean? Degree of freedom is understood as the number of independent coordinates used to describe the motion of the system in a body. Okay. So, for example, a free particle undergoing general motion in a space has 3 degrees of freedom what are the 3 degrees of freedom? That is two trans, 3 translation in x, y, z direction. A rigid body on the other hand has 6 degrees of freedom. So, what are these 6 degrees of freedom? You can see that these are 3 translation along the 3 coordinate axis and 3 rotation about this axis. So, 6 degrees of freedom is a characteristic of a rigid body motion in space. Generally, degrees of freedom are known as a single degree of freedom and multi degree of freedom. Actually, in a dynamic system, we model the system by single degree of freedom system, multi degree of freedom system. But these degrees of freedom actually causes or converts the continuous system into equivalent discrete system. So, let us uh, illustrate with some example. Say here a mass is suspended by a spring and uh, the mass is undergoing motion in the vertical direction only. So, it is destined to move in the vertical direction and therefore, the system is known as single degree of freedom system. Now, here the only one motion is there say that is uh, one coordinate is sufficient to describe the motion of the body that is the vertical translatory motion. Now, here another example let us see we have a rigid beam and uh, the beam is pivoted at one end that is hinged at one end and uh, some spring is uh, attached with the beam here and see that the beam is rigid. However, the mass of the beam is assumed to be lumped at the uh, this tip of the beam and there is no self weight or distributed weight over the beam. So, we see that this bar or beam can undergo this uh, rotation because it is pivoted here. So, this mass this bar may have a vertical motion as well as this rotation, but you can see that vertical motion of the bar that is tip of the bar is now related with the rotational motion theta that is we can easily see that x is equal to a plus b tan theta. So, the x and theta is not independent. So, therefore, the theta and x cannot be classified or cannot be categorized as two degrees of freedom of this system. So, therefore, this is a single degree of freedom system either you des describe the motion by x or you describe the motion by theta. Any one of these will give you the same results. If you find out theta immediately you can find x. Okay. This is another example say a rigid bar is connected with two springs and uh, this is a actually a model of a car that is known as half car model and you can see that the this bar can undergo two types of motion one is vertical motion and another is rotation, but these are independent. So, therefore, this x and theta are known as two degrees of freedom system. In earlier case what we have seen that x and theta are not independent they are related by this relation. 
So, therefore, we have classified this system as single degree of freedom system. Whereas, in this case, we have seen that x and theta are independent, they cannot be related by any relations or e equation. So, therefore, we have to analyze this as a two degree of freedom system. Another example here you can see a model of a three storied building in a simplified assumption we lumped the mass of the floors and other beams etcetera in the center of the floors. So, we have three masses m 1, m 2, m 3 and it is assumed that the column has uh, the elastic properties that is column is uh, having this um, uh, sway motion, but we assume that this uh, sway is equal at both the columns. So, therefore, this type of model is known as shear building and we can model this system as 3 degrees of freedom system. Actually, we model this building as a 3 degree of freedom system. So, here again you can see that the spring that you are seeing here is nothing but the stiffness of the column and the motion of the, the mass, the floor mass is denoted by x 1, x 2, x 3, but x 1, x 2, x 3 are independent they cannot be related by any mathematical relation. So, therefore, we call this idealized model of the building as 3 degrees of freedom system. Okay. Now, vibration is actually oscillatory motion and uh, oscillatory motion means that it repeats itself regularly at some interval. Uh, the examples are balance of a wheel of a watch or that displays significant regularity, but there are non periodic motion okay, that shows the significant irregularity. So, that type of motion is noticed in case of earthquake uh, record. You can see any earthquake record accelerogram that have very much irregularity. When the motion is repeated in equal interval of time, then we can designate the motion with a period t and it is called a periodic motion t is the capital T is the period of the motion. The repetition time t is called the time period of vibration. The reciprocal of the time period is called frequency f and it is nothing but uh, this 1 by t. The unit of uh, the frequency may be cycles per second or we call it hertz and circular frequency can also be related with the uh, frequency f just like a simple relation omega is equal to 2 pi f where the unit will be radian per second. So, example of periodic motion here you can see this is the period the motion is repeating after this uh, time and here you can see a non periodic motion which has significant irregularity. Mathematical property of periodic function can be seen that if x t is a periodic function and t is the time period of the motion then x t equal to x plus t plus capital T. So, that relationship is satisfied in case of periodic motion. Now, in vibration we also encounter very frequently uh, two terms uh, which are known as free vibration and force vibration. Let us see what are these terms mean. Free vibration that is a vibration taking place when a system oscillates under the action of forces inherent in the system and no other external force. So, uh, the system vibrates, but how it vibrates there must be some inherent force that inherent force is understood as in the form of initial displacement and velocity. So, even in absence of any external force if the system has initial displacement and velocity with that uh, condition the free vibration motion can occur. Force vibration the system vibrates as a response 
to the externally applied force whatever force may be uh, you can apply a periodic force or non periodic force may apply due to earth natural disaster like earthquake cyclone etc modeling of structure for dynamic analysis now we have seen some important terms that are used in uh, dynamic problems and we have also understood the effects of dynamic load that is the vibration. Now, let us see how a dynamic model can be created. That means, given a system or knowing the material properties, dimension etcetera, how we can construct a model that is useful for mathematical analysis. So, in general there are two types of model, one is discrete and continuous. The structures are nothing but assemblies of components acting as a whole. So, it can be idealized as a discrete model or as a special case you can consider it as a continuous model. Now, let us see what is discrete model. The physical properties of the system are discrete quantities, it has finite number of degrees of freedom. Here the properties of the system that you may mean this inner mass of the system is lumped at the centroid of the body or the stiffness of this uh, body is not distributed, it is a discrete element that is attached with the mass and other properties of the dynamic system. So, the discrete model has finite number of degrees of freedom that I have illustrated with some example earlier. For example, this uh, three storied building actually it is a continuous model, but we have idealized as a discrete one. So, it has finite number of degrees of freedom that is three degrees of freedom system. Okay. Discrete model are analyzed with the help of ordinary differential equations, because it is dependent on time only and therefore, problem is nothing but a initial value problem. Now, let us see the other system what is known as continuous system. The physical properties of the system are distributed in space. So, instead of lumping the mass and stiffness at certain point, we have to consider the distribution of this uh, parameter in the space in the domain of the structures uniformly or non uniformly as the case may be. Such systems are described by partial differential equation. Since the time is a important parameter in the dynamic problem, but in addition the distribution of parameter or the exciting force are dependent on space variable. Therefore, it must be a partial differential equation instead of ordinary differential equation. And discrete model are representation of infinite number of degrees of freedom. You can see here for example, we have taken a cantilever beam of certain dimension and say it is of constant cross section may not be of constant uh, cross section it may be of variable cross section also, but for example, we have taken a constant cross section and uh, the mass of the beam is distributed along the length of the beam. So, therefore, it is a function of x although it is uniform, but it is a function of x. In case of non uniform say the beam is tapered then cross section is also variable along the length of the beam. So, in that case the cross sectional area and uh, the mass per unit length will also be variable in x. Okay. This type of model is known as continuous model, whereas the simplification of this model can be done like that. Suppose we lump the mass at the tip of the beam and then stiffness of the beam is represented by a spring whose value is k is equal to 3 e i by l q, then it can be idealized as a discrete model. With the help of this model, if you find the natural frequency, you will get certain value, but if you analyze this model, you will get more accurate value. So, continuous system gives the 
results which are close to the real scenario, where a discrete model may give you a result which is approximation, but it is also in some cases represent the results which are close to the practical value. So, therefore, two models are useful. It is not that one has to work with only uh, with the continuous model. Discrete model can also be adopted in various situation. Okay. Now, let us see discrete and continuous model represent two different mathematical models, but they are for the same physical system. It is not that in earlier cases that we consider this model is also representing the cantilever beam. So, two models are of the same system that is a cantilever beam. So, therefore, it represents two different mathematical models of identical physical system. In continuous model, the degrees of freedom are infinite, whereas discrete system it is represented by finite number of degrees of freedom. Both will represent similar behavior except the space distribution of the parameter is absent in case of discrete model. Whereas, in continuous model, we will get the parameters exciting force and others the response also are distributed in the space domain. See mathematical model of a continuous system is actually the limiting case of that of a discrete system and one important thing is that the continuous system model is represented by partial differential equation. Okay. Now, we will tell about the characteristics of the dynamic system. The dynamic system should possess the following elements inertia, stiffness and damping. Sometimes damping may not be considered in a model, but inertia and stiffness are common in all dynamic models that we analyze for practical purpose. The inertia element establishes the relation between force and acceleration and according to Newton's law, if you see that force is proportional to acceleration, that constant of proportionality is nothing but your inertia terms. And that inertia term for linear motion, we take it as a mass, whereas for rotational motion, we take it the polar moment of or mass moment of inertia. Okay. The stiffness element relates the force to the displacement. In dynamic model, it is represented by spring. So, spring is a representation of stiffness of the element, which has elastic properties. The springs are generally assumed to be massless. In some analysis, mass of the spring may also be considered, but there will be some change in the uh, result. We will see one or two cases where mass of the spring is to be gone, but generally the mass of the spring is small compared to the mass of the body. So, therefore, uh, neglecting mass we construct the stiffness element with a spring. Spring force is proportional to the relative displacement. So, at one end displacement is x 1 and other end displacement is x 2. So, relative displacement is x 1 minus x 2. So, if I plot the spring force with the relative displacement as one of the parameters along the x axis and f s is along the y axis, we can see that to certain extent it will behave linearly and then the nonlinear region may come. But in this case, since it is proportional, so this relation is valid only for linear region. So, this is the linear range in which this relation is applicable and this we can call it f s is equal to k into x 1 minus x 2, where k is the spring constant and it is nothing but slope of this straight line. Okay. Then we come to the damping properties and here you can see a damping model, the damper is represented by a dashpot. Now, this is nothing but a piston fitting loosely in a cylinder filled with well or water such that viscous fluid can flow around the piston inside the cylinder. So, such type of motion actually dissipates the energy. So, damping is nothing but a model of dissipation of energy. 
the force is assumed to cause smooth shear in viscous fluid. So, therefore, the force velocity relationship is linear. So, that relationship is again taken as a linear relationship and it is represented by f equal to some constant into x 1 dot minus x 2 dot, where x 1 dot minus x 2 dot are the velocities at the two ends of the damper. Okay. Now, let us see what is the model of a undamped system. We construct here a simple model of oscillator with mass and spring. This is the unstressed position of the spring and this is the static equilibrium position. So, you can see that uh, from unstressed, unstressed position of the spring, when the load is attached at one end of the spring, the deformation is delta, that is displacement is delta. And now, due to some causes, the load etcetera, uh, external load or initial uh, disturbance, that vibration is taking place. So, this x is the displacement that is caused due to the external forces or due to this initial condition that is imposed in the system and we measure the x from the static equilibrium position. Now, let us see how we can analyze this model. K into delta is the w that is the weight of the system and when we see mass is under motion, then applying the Newton's law, we get the inertia force equal to sum of all the forces and therefore, we write w is equal to minus k into delta plus x total displacement is delta plus x because this end is fixed plus any other external load that I have added here f t. f t may be 0 also in case of free vibration, but we have added in general f t. So, you can see in the unstressed uh, static equilibrium position k delta equal to m g. So, therefore, the effect of weight is eliminated in this type of model. If we measure the displacement, velocity and acceleration taking the reference as the static equilibrium position. So, the differential equation for modeling this system now becomes m x double dot plus k x equal to f t, where x dot is the derivative of x with respect to time t. Double dot means second derivative. So, we have written it elaborately here d 2 x by d t square plus omega n square x equal to f t by m, where omega n square is k by m. Omega n is called the natural frequency of the system. Now, here for free vibration we take f t equal to 0. Now, if f t is 0, then we have the free vibration equation and we want to solve it. So, solution method is same as that of ordinary differential equation and here we take the solution in the form of a is equal to e to the power lambda t, where lambda is the roots of the characteristic equation. By substituting this x is equal to a e to the power lambda t in this differential equation, we get a characteristic equation lambda square plus omega n square equal to 0 from which we get lambda is equal to plus minus i omega n, where i is the imaginary quantity that is root over minus 1. So, once we get the roots of the characteristic equation, we can write the solution x t equal to c 1 e to the power i omega n t plus c 2 minus i omega n t. And you know that i omega n t can be expressed in terms of cos omega n t plus i sin omega n t. Similarly, here also e to the power minus i omega n t can be expressed in terms of uh, this cos omega n t minus i sin omega n t and ultimately rearranging the constant we can write x t is equal to a cos omega n t plus b sin omega n t. So, this is the equation uh, solution of the 
equation differential equation that represents a model of undamped system which is of single degree freedom. Now, this uh, has two constants of integration a and b which has to be found out by applying the initial conditions. So, let us assume that at t is equal to 0 initial displacement is u and initial velocity is v. So, utilizing this condition in this equation and its derivative we ultimately get the equation of this uh, displacement of the mass as x t equal to u cos omega n t plus v by omega n sin omega n t. So, this is a very important relationship and we will use in several cases whether it is a discrete system and uh, this continuous system in many problems we have to use this frequently. So, in some cases when the velocity is 0 we have this term x t is equal to u cos omega n t and in some cases when initial displacement is 0 then we have v by x omega n sin omega n t. So, initial displacement 0 where velocity exists such type of situation occurs in impulsive motion. Okay. Now, you can see the graphical representation of this free vibration of the mass is like that where say a is the amplitude of the motion. Okay. Now, the velocity if you plot you will get this x dot is the velocity and acceleration again if you plot after differentiating this that means, this equation if it is differentiated once with respect to t you will get the velocity and if you plot you will get this curve. And uh, after differentiating the velocity equation you will get this acceleration curve the third derivative of this displacement that is the first derivative of the acceleration is also sometimes used and it is known as jerk. This is specially used in analyzing of the right comfort of a vehicle. Now, if you see the phase relationship you can notice here the displacement and velocity are having 90 degree phase whereas, the acceleration is having 180 degree out of phase. So, that you can notice very clearly from this diagram. Now, let us model a damped system. A general model of undamped system is represented by m that is the mass and stiffness that is represented by a spring with a parameter k and dashboard that is the model of damper and it is represented by C. So, these are the system parameters m, k and c and external force is f. So, such type of motion is represented by the second order equation. Here we get this uh, second derivative term as well as first derivative term because of this damping. The relative velocity between mass and this because this end is fixed. So, relative velocity is x dot minus 0. So, therefore, we get c into x dot. Similarly, the relative uh, displacement is x here. So, spring force is k x, damper force is c x dot and this is the inertia force mass into x double dot. So, uh, in case of free vibration f t is taken 0 and again we solve by the usual method taking x is equal to a into e to the power lambda t and after substituting this we get this equation m lambda square plus c lambda plus k equal to 0 ultimately this has to be cancelled. And solving this we get two roots of the equation lambda 1 and lambda 2 as minus c by 2 m plus minus root over c by 2 m whole square minus k by m. So, the equation uh, of motion uh, this uh, equation for displacement is written as x t equal to c 1 e to the power lambda 1 t plus c 2 e to the power lambda 2 t, where lambda 1 and lambda 2 are these parameters that already uh, was found in the earlier slide. And substituting this lambda 1 and lambda 2 here we ultimately arrive at a equation you can see here. Uh, 
you will get the exponential term uh, minus e to the power minus c by 2 m t and there are other exponential term you are getting here. Now, because of that fact you will get the motion is of decaying nature because the exponential minus because c m are positive quantity and t is also positive. So, you will get a decaying effect due to this term. Now, different cases may arise and these will classify the damping properties of the system in different uh, groups. So, let us see this case 1 where c by 2 m square equal to k by m. So, in that case the roots lambda 1 and lambda 2 are equal. So, we get the solution x t equal to e to the power minus c by 2 m t into a plus b t because of equal and real roots and the displacement velocity can also be found after differentiating this, but two constant of integration required to be found based on the initial condition. Let us take the initial condition at t is equal to 0 b u and v u represents the initial velocity v represents the initial displacement. After utilizing this condition we ultimately get x t equal to e to the power minus omega n t into u plus v plus u into omega n t. So, this is the condition where the two roots of the system lambda 1 and lambda 2 are equal and such type of system is known as critically damped system. So, in that case we have some important definitions say critically damped system occurs when c by 2 m square equal to k by m that is omega n square and therefore, critical damping this damping c is can be found as c c equal to 2 m omega n. The ratio of actual damping to the critical damping is known as damping ratio and it is defined as c by c c equal to j. Uh, for this case the where two roots of the equations are equal that is c by 2 m square equal to k by m then we get j is equal to 1. j is equal to 1 represents the critically damped system. Okay. Now, case 2 when c by 2 m square is greater than k by m. So, in that case lambda 1 and lambda 2 are real and unequal. So, in this case the critical damping ratio is obviously greater than 1. So, such type of system is known as overdamped system, overdamped system and in this case motion is non oscillatory again because for oscillatory motion we require the presence of sin and cosine terms. If sin and cosine terms are not present then we will not get an oscillatory motion in the vibration problem. So, here we write x t equal to e to the power minus c by 2 m t and other parameters the constant of integration c 1 and c 2 and e to the power root over c by 2 m square minus k by m t. In another case c 2 e to the power minus root over c by 2 m square minus k by m into t. Constant c 1 and c 2 again have to be found by applying initial condition. So, if the initial conditions are known and uh, in terms of u and v we can again apply the same method and we can find out here the initial uh, the condition gives the constant c 1 as v plus j plus root over j square minus 1 omega n into u divided by 2 omega n root over j square minus 1 c 2 equal to minus v minus bracket j plus root over j square minus 1 bracket closed omega n u divided by 2 omega n j square minus 1. So, you can see this uh, two types of motion where the critical damping parameter is equal to 1 or greater than 1 is represented by such type of curves which are non oscillatory. Okay. Now, we encounter a system 
where c by 2 m square is less than k by m and such type of systems are common in engineering application. And we will see in that case the roots lambda 1 and lambda 2 are complex. So, complex roots will give rise to the appearance of the sine and cosine terms. So, here we can see the x t is represented by c 1 e to the power i into omega n t root over 1 minus j square plus c 2 e to the power minus i omega n t root over 1 minus j square into e to the power minus j omega n t because j is less than 1. So, therefore, we have got a imaginary unit here i. So, after expanding this using de Moivre's theorem in trigonometry, you will uh, get this as e to the power minus j omega n t into a cos omega d t plus b sin omega d t. Omega d t is nothing but omega n into root over 1 minus j square and it is known as damped natural frequency. So, you can see the undamped natural frequency and damped natural frequency is related by simple parameter root over 1 minus j square. In most of the cases, the j is less than 1 and it is very small quantity. So, there is very little difference between the undamped frequency and damped frequency of the system. With the initial condition u and v, the final solution can be written as x t equal to e to the power minus j omega n t into u cos omega d t plus v plus j omega n u divided by omega d into sin omega d t. And if we see the plot of this curve that is if I plot uh, the displacement x against t then we will see the amplitude of the curve is gradually decreasing and this is due to the effect of damping. In other cases also we have seen that amplitude decreases because of uh, this uh, effect of damping, but in that case the motion was not oscillatory. So, here we can tell that this the displacement magnitude gradually decreases with time, but here we see that it is oscillatory and in the same time the amplitude are also decreasing with time and this is nothing but an envelope that we join the peak of each peak then we will get this curve. Okay. So, let us summarize what we have uh, covered in today's lecture. In this lecture we covered general concept of modeling of dynamic system by telling you that there are two system available one is discrete and continuous approach, but they represent the same physical system. So, it is not that the continuous modeling will give you exactly different results and discrete result will give you something. It is not that you will get the result which are very near to each other, but the continuous modeling gives you uh, the detailed description of the results then that means, you will get the distribution of the quantities in space, whereas discrete model uh, that facility does not exist because uh, in discrete model the equations are modeled by ordinary differential equation and therefore, only one variable the time is involved. So, you will get only the time variation of the quantities, but in continuous approach you will get the space time variation. These two different methods of model leads to same dynamic behavior that I have already explained and uh, we also uh, identified some elements for modeling that is the inertia element that is the mass or the mass moment of inertia in case of rotational motion then stiffness which is the spring element and damping represented by dashpot. We introduced some terminology that is free vibration, force vibration, period of motion, degrees of freedom that are useful in analyzing a vibration problem and uh, the concept of degrees of freedom are necessary uh, to first 
to have a plan for modeling, whether you go for the discrete modeling up to limited number of degrees of freedom or you want to model it with the help of continuous system. So, lastly we have uh, analyzed a simple model of undamped and damped system and we explain the properties uh, of the damped system that means in which case the system is oscillatory, oscillatory and under which situation the system is non oscillatory. So, the damped systems are divided into three categories critically damped system, over damped system and under damped system. Thank you very much. Thank you.